couple of days back, um, Oda and Kishimoto engaged in oral interaction. It was actually an interview that took place and it lasted for about four hours. Now, <laughs> I'm not an expert on friendships, but if you're talking with somebody for four hours, um, you know, odds are you don't dislike them. In fact, you probably, from what I can tell from what I read, you know, they're, they're pretty good pals. And most of us suspected that this was the case because of the way that Kishimoto ended Naruto with Boruto, you know, drawing the, the Jolly Roger on the Hokage Hill. To me as a reader, the way that I interpreted it was just basically Kishimoto saying, my story is over, thank you so much for your support, go read One Piece. <laughs> At least that's what I would want it to mean. And then Oda did the same thing with, you know, he drew a, a cover page with Naruto and Luffy exchanging meals. Notice how he picked Oda, you know. He's not referencing Kubo, he's not referencing Togashi, hiatus, hiatus. What I didn't know, and this is something that Kishimoto mentions in the interview, is that the chapter, the One Piece chapter is called Smile, and that made him feel something. Noda said that he not just wanted to do the cover, he also wanted to put Naruto stuff in the chapter itself, but because the chapter was about Corazon, and it's a pretty sad flashback, so I mean, just to have Naruto there would be like, you know, this is pretty fucking depressing with Corazon. Um, but Luffy wasn't in it, so he's just like, I can't do it, so I'll just put it in the cover. Now, because the thing is four hours long, uh, I've only read a chunk of it, and I think only a chunk of it is available. Link in the description. So they're pretty cool with each other overall, but in the beginning, Oda does mention the existence of a friendly rivalry. He says, at first, I was really frustrated that Naruto was more popular than One Piece in foreign countries. And that's always been the case. Like, Naruto has always been more popular in other countries like the United States, but in Japan, like, One Piece is number one. So if I could give Oda a suggestion um, to increase the popularity of One Piece worldwide would be to add, add stuff that creates more bullshit pairing debates. That's always good. I'm sorry, that's not even funny. I can't believe I said that. Try making One Piece a little bit more, like, Keeping up with the Kardashians, for example. <laughs> um, that way it's more popular. It's complete shit, but it's more popular. I'm obviously just kidding. Don't do any of those things. Um, you know, I'm not even sure if like pairings increase the female demographic, but even if it does, don't do it. Unless it leads to a pretty good hentai. No, but seriously, like, like thinking ahead to the end of One Piece, let's like... These people, like, the Straw Hats are gonna have to reproduce, at least some of them are. Like, I don't think all of them are asexual, you know? How weird would it be if, like, by the end of the show, like, all the Straw Hats are grown, and Oda just writes, and none of the Straw Hats had any children whatsoever, but they died with their adventure in their heart. But then Oda met Kishimoto, and he thought he was a pretty cool guy, and the rivalry wasn't worth a shit anymore because they became, <laughs> we became friends, Sasuke. Now this is what I find funny, and this may be just, you know, the translation of the interview, but there are some parts where Oda, it sounds like he's being a little bit of a dick, just a little, like, listen, the one having a good time here is Kishimoto. He's like laughing it up and shit, and then Oda, he says, it's wonderful having Naruto as an opponent. Naruto is more popular than One Piece in foreign countries. Though a part of me has not reconciled to that truth, <laughs> at the same time, I'm grateful. So there's a part of him that really, really wants to be bitter. There's, there's a part of Oda that wants to shake Kishimoto's hand, pat him on the back, hug him even, and then there's another part of Oda that really wants to punch Kishimoto in the face. So in other words, Oda's just being a pretty normal Naruto fan. Because that's, that's how a bunch of Naruto fans feel most of the time. It's cool though, that he says that now that Naruto has ended, he feels kind of lonely because you, you get used to competing and it's like, okay, so after this is over, it's like, I mean, there's no competition for Oda, not in Japan at least. Kishimoto's just laughing it up. He says, I think I'm the one who has less pressure. You know, Oda-san, you're always at your peak. Your hard work and pain must be abnormal. Uh, if I were you, I guess I would have gastrointestinal perforation due to a huge amount of pressure. Yeah, that's why Oda sometimes gets sick and he has to go to the hospital and we get breaks and... So, I don't know how well he takes care of himself, but he should take Kishimoto's advice because Kishimoto, I think, rarely, if ever, got sick. There's a part where Oda says that Kishimoto actually is pretty knowledgeable when it comes to animation, which I guess that's why the the fights in the manga look pretty good because I think Kishimoto knows how to storyboard them pretty pretty well. The interviewer asks Kishimoto which character of One Piece do you like the most? And I don't know if this is Kishimoto trolling, but he says Bellamy. Out of all the characters in One Piece, you pick the one that is constantly 
beaten to a pulp. Are we talking about post-time skip Bellamy or pre-time skip Bellamy? Because I think he sucks less post-time skip. But no, but then Kishimoto says, you know, I actually like Chopper. He likes Chopper because he's weak and timid, but he's also a real monster. And there's another link that I'm going to leave in the description where Oda says that he likes, he really likes the characters of Mike Guy, uh, Lee, and Sabusa. There's some pretty cool info. Um, I like how Kishimoto intentionally made Naruto return to the village after every single mission to separate it from One Piece, which is basically like a journey. Although technically, like, the, the One Piece characters usually return to the Sunny after every arc, which is kind of their home, so. There's one point that says that Oda basically went to Kishimoto and said, hey, you know that expansion jutsu that Joji has? I'm gonna give that to, to Luffy as gear third. And Kishimoto's like, okay, no problem. Sanji's name was initially gonna be Naruto, which I kinda already knew. That would have given, like, Sanji and Naruto fanboys <laughs> just, just the same meaning. Like, you're a Naruto fanboy. Do you mean Naruto from One Piece or Naruto from Naruto? And then finally, Kishimoto says that he would like to work on something related to science fiction, which I think kind of explains the sort of dimensional travel that took place during the Kaguya arc, because that's very sci-fi. So I can't wait for Naruto Part 4, Ninjas in Space, where Boruto and Sarada end up meeting Yoda, and then Himawari accidentally ends up cutting off Naruto's good arm with a lightsaber. This is where Oda, he starts getting dickish, I'm not gonna lie, he starts getting dickish. He tells Kishimoto, you have 15 years of experience, short series must be much easier for you. People around you and Kishimoto yourself are not paying enough attention to it. In the final part of this interview, Kishimoto talks about falling down some stairs and, and almost dying because of the accident. And then Oda says, if you had died like that, you would have definitely become a legend. Instead of saying like, wow, I'm really sorry that happened to you. Are you okay now? Well, if you had died, well, let's pretend that you actually had died for a moment here. But they're bros, they're cool, everything's fine. Um, I don't really know them uh, personally. All I know is what, what I read from them through their stories, but they seem cool. And that's the thing about people that are like celebrities, quote unquote, or famous, is that people just automatically assume that, you know, they're like, oh my gosh. But you can tell from the way that they're talking to each other that they're just normal people. Like they, they joke, they fart, they crack up. Lastly, just a little bit of news concerning Naruto Hiden. The Gata story will be released in June, and it turns out that Viz actually already licensed all of these, uh, you know, Naruto Hiden light novels, so we'll be getting them in English, which is great. In this story, it seems like Gata has to deal with an arranged marriage and finding love. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to thumb up the video if you appreciated it, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Comment. Bye, guys.